XRP Collective, XRP Line 1 here. It is Tuesday, the 17th, the 18th of July at approximately 6.45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I just had a nice little download session with the Lord, and I wanted to relay some of that information to you. One of the things that I find so interesting, and I know many of you do too, that receive downloads from the Lord, there are times when it is like a pinpoint, and it's one little piece of information, and it's like dropping a droplet of ink into water, and it just goes And other times, there is so much information. I mean, it's like my cup is, is running over right now. He has got me. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to contain it. I'm trying to document it. I'm trying to write it down. And, it, and it's just, it just keeps coming. And I'm, I'm going back to, to my note page right now over something that was just absolutely phenomenal. And I didn't even have time to write down where the starting point came from other than just a number. Which, as it plays through, it takes us to a very prophetic date of August 3rd. And August 3rd is one of those dates I talked about back in February. That just keeps coming up over and over and over and over. And there's just this convergence going to August 3rd. As we come into the end of July, July 30th. And then yesterday we're working on a couple of other items. And I'm going back through some of my old posts looking for something in particular that I put out a request for your help for. And he'll do this lots of times just to refresh things that we've gone over that, you know, my little human brain can't retain. And that is August 15th of 1971 was the day that we went off the gold standard. August 13th, 1971, when Nixon took, took us off the gold standard. That's 21 years exactly to August 15th of this year. And everything is prophetic. These dates that these things happen on aren't by coincidence. They're not by luck. They're not by chance. He literally has caused these events to happen on these dates because... He already knows those dates. He created those dates back before time began. And I've talked about that before. Everything has already been created. It's already done. As it is in heaven. When Jesus was asked by his disciples, Father, Jesus... How do we pray to the Father in heaven? And he said, pray this way. The pearl in that praying to the Father was not that it was a prayer, but it was an acknowledgement that we don't have any worries. He already saw everything before he spoke, before he said, let there be light. And here's a very simple analogy. If you were walking down a busy street, a big four lane semi road highway interstate, and it had a signal light, and I've seen these before. I'm sure you guys have too. 
you wouldn't just walk across the street. You would wait for the signal light to stop the traffic. You'd make sure traffic was stopped and you would start across. So he saw everything before that moment. He provided the solution before that moment. And it's no different now for us. Part of our journey and our walk with the Lord is, is coming into that understanding. Receiving that wisdom through His Spirit about our true identity in Christ. That He's already taken care of everything. That's why it was so overwhelming when that download came about the entire plan going all the way back to the Maya and the Maya calendar and what their purpose was in keeping track of the time. I mean, they still have people that monitor that daily still. Why? Because God's plans continue to unfold. He's not doing anything new. He doesn't have to. Because he already did it. Now it's just the manifestation of it going from heaven to earth. Now what do we know? We know as of January, February, uh, excuse me, so many dates have been going over here. December 22nd of 2020, that 7,885 year contract with the devil expired. And at that moment, God could do everything and anything that he had already planned out for his chosen, those that are called by his name those that have professed that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. See, only as Gentiles are we given that privilege. God handed us over to Jesus as Gentiles. That was the only way we could come in and it was to be grafted in because we were not part of the original chosen group, which were the Israelites, those that flee. See, a lot of people don't know that before they became Israelites, they were Hebrew, the Hebrews. When Moses went back for the second time to Pharaoh and said, set my people free. And after all the stuff that happened, he just said, go, get out of here, take whatever you want and leave with it. Their name changed. And they went from Hebrews to Israelites and Israelites means those that flee. And that's when the 40, 40 years, actually 80 years in the desert began. They started out with 40 and then they got an additional 40 because they just kept complaining and grumbling. And literally a generation died out. So that generation would not enter into the promised land. We are stepping into our promised land now because as of that date, the date that contract expired, God could proclaim, this is my time, right? And it's referred to in Revelation as the new age. Now, 
many call it the age of Aquarius just because of where it is astrologically. But heaven is now in control of earth. What does that mean? It's what he's had me share with you with regards to an open heaven. The opportunity to be with the Father, to hear from him, to receive downloads, visions, dreams, lay hands on on people, and they'll be healed. This is what's talked about in Revelations. And it's only increasing from here, everyone. It only gets stronger. It only gets bolder. That's why darkness is fleeing. Or I should say it's being annihilated by the light. Demolished. Abolished. Everything of the dark is being abolished. And from a view from heaven, that's already taken place. See? The perspective is, where are you in terms of how you view what's going on? Are you looking at it from your surroundings? Are you looking at it from earth? Or are you viewing it with a heaven perspective? When you view from a heaven perspective... You're speaking from your place and your true identity in Christ with the Father. And there's nothing that can overcome that. There's nothing that suppresses that. Doors are opened and remain open. That's why I talk about the door of wisdom. When you effectively are worshiping with praise and thanksgiving, that's how we enter into the courtyard. That's how we enter in through the gates. And that door to wisdom is constantly open. You've already claimed your identity. It's like little little John Jr. being in the White House with his dad. That famous photograph. There was nothing that would cause him to think that that wasn't acceptable behavior to walk into that room and just play on the floor with his dad. That's what the Father says to us. But we have to claim our identity, our true identity, and not this pseudo-identity that we try to create for ourselves on earth by what we do, what we wear, what we drive, where we live, All of that's going away as we grow and mature in our true identity. Because we're about the Father's business. We're sons and daughters of God with every provision necessary available at our fingertips. It always reminds me of the the story of the immigrant who was coming from Europe over to the United States and he had just scrounged up enough to get on the boat. But he didn't have much money left for food so he, he bought the little bit that he could before the boat left. 
And when people would eat, he would hide and eat his bread and his cheese until it literally was gone. And he had no food and he was starving. And the ship finally got to New York and someone saw him and they had to help him off the boat. And they asked him, how did you get to this condition? And he said, I had no money for food. And the steward says, no one told you it was included in the price? See, most people are living their life that way today. They don't understand the full depth and breadth and width and height of what we have as children of God. So they fight with the world to get it, or they give up. But the world does a really good job of trying to make sure that we don't get it. And it created tools to make sure we couldn't. Taxes. Different things like that. But all that goes away in the new system. God's system. And that system runs on love. That's its currency. Currency is love. Now, will we not have some form of exchange for getting goods and services and things like that? Yes, we will. But when it comes right down to it, what holds society together, what advances society, it's our love. See, until that contract expired, we were just walking out our salvation, as Paul put it. We were sustaining life until the time, until this time right now. And it's not like they haven't known it. They've been trying to do it for a while. They made, they made sure we weren't going to get it on September 11th, 2001. They knew that date was coming. And they did it with the, with the devil's help. And there wasn't anything God could do to stop it. It's different now. They are literally taking away tens of thousands of people, evil people. And they're being dealt with according to God's law. And that's all I'm going to say on it. We're going to get to watch this. We're going to get to see it. This will be the greatest awakening in human history for people to see what evil has done and the fact that it isn't going to be tolerated going forward. Now, I truly believe that inside every person, well, I know God exists. He's in our DNA. It's been proven. is a good person. A really good person. Right down to the their marrow. But it's their surroundings and society and everything else that forces them to do what they do. Now, of course, they have a choice. And they justify it. We all justify what we do every day. But as we move forward into this new kingdom quantity QFS reset, 
We have to be more than we are today. Way more. We have to understand about what your what what is my true identity? Who am I? If you're going to survive, that's going to be the highest standard for going forward. And if we if we can't meet the bar, and we've talked about how high the bar is, we're not going to be around very long. God loves everyone. Every single one of us are on his heart. And you've heard me talk about how he shares with me every single day how much he loves you guys. And it really chokes me up. And he knows a lot of people aren't going to be with him, and it's okay. He's okay with that. But we're going to be with him here on earth for a while more. This is, this is, the, this is the harvest time. This is the, the great harvest that's been prophesied about. We are already in an eternal revival. So you can't have eternal revival Unless heaven is on earth. So that's why it didn't didn't happen back in the 1800s and 1900s. And each time it's happened across the world. Because heaven wasn't physically on earth. It is now. Because that contract expired. And because of that, it means so much for all of us. That's why the bar is, is not where it used to be. Good is the enemy of great now. Good is the enemy of great. God isn't good. He's great. Okay? We can't be good. We have to be great. That means we have to rise up. We have to control our mouth. We have to control our tongue. We have to control what goes into our ears and our eyes. Those are, our, those are the gates. We can't just be blurting off words because everybody else is using them. Because our words are creative. Our thoughts are creative. And what is it we want to create now that heaven's on earth? Now that we're going to have the, the, the financial resources that we never even thought were possible to use. Because if, you, if you're not operating from a place of your true identity, here's, here's the result. Three to five years, it's all going to be gone. And you're going to be right back to where you are today, miserable. Miserable. Wondering what happened. And you're going to watch people around you that are flourishing. Their fields are overflowing. 30, 60, 90, 100 fold returns. And with the currency of heaven being love going forward, there isn't going to be interest going forward in the way that you and I have seen interest. Biblically, interest was, could not be charged to a brother or a friend. 
only to a foreigner. Same is going to hold true. So how do we make, how will God show us? How will we work together to grow what he has entrusted to us? Through love, through people, see. In the parable of the talents, nowhere does it say, how much interest did you make? I mean, even, even the one that buried it, <clears throat> Jesus was like, you couldn't even put it in the, in quote, the bank and make interest on it? See, that's why it wasn't part of the parable's truth. The truth was, did by your love and the use of this, Did it expand through people? See, people are the growth. People, through the love, is what's going to be checked. That's why it's going to be important that that money go into good, well, actually great soil now, great soil. And that's why pressing and leaning into him is going to help everybody, every person, through wisdom, know if that is good soil. I've been developing relationships with certain key people in the industry to know how to identify that. Because you can give money to any organization But does it do what it says it does? Sound familiar? Does it do what it says it does? Do you want to put it into XRPs or do you want to put it into something else that just goes nowhere? Dies out. That's what God's saying. And that's how the harvest takes place. Because it just doesn't stop. It's like a perpetual wheel that once placed into motion, nothing can stop it, nor will he allow it to stop. So that's us. That's you and me. That's us spending time with the Father. Just praising and thanking him and just hanging out and being with Papa. And then allowing him to share with us exactly what he wants to do. He brings the people. He creates the introductions. We still have to do our part. We have to use due diligence. We have to use contracts. We have to use those things. So I'm big on foundations. That's the vehicle to do it with, and it still is. It still will be in the future. And at the end of the day, we're doing exactly what we always wanted to do. We don't have to earn a living anymore, people. Those days are over. Because God said so. Everything that you were doing in the past, lay it down. Just lay it down. You're not going to have time. If you literally take and figure, just use 25% of your proceeds from XRP going into your foundation, multiply that times a three-digit number. I probably shouldn't have said that. And see how much money that is. Multiply that by 5%. 
And that's how much money you have to give away at a minimum every year. Give away. That's what you have to do with the foundation. Most of you are going to find that that, like, I've talked about this before too. It's a full-time job for five people. You, your spouse, your children, and some support people. Full-time. I'm not talking about you're running this t-shirt business over here, you're trying to do this or that. No, you're going to use the skills that you've learned up to this point to complement what it is you need to do. Like I mentioned to you, one of the areas for me is the fishing industry. I was a professional bass fisherman until the Lord told me to put it down. Sold my boat. Boxed up all my tackle. And have fished one tournament. Since April 4th of 2021. He's identified that that's the industry for me to give into, to seed into, to create, to bring God's love. We're going to turn it upside down. And I know there are areas for you that are the same way. See, that, that that's going to be where my ministry is. that's where I'm most comfortable. Those are the people I, I, I know how to talk to. I relate to them. And then we started making custom fishing baits years ago. That no one has really seen yet because we didn't launch. Right when we're getting ready to launch, COVID hit. Or should I say the C word? Excuse me. So it's not like you're going to be doing anything different. That's what I wanted to point out. Most of you are going to find out it, you're, he's having you do something already well within your comfort zone. Other people have been waiting to <clears throat> do many, many things and we'll, we'll just generalize this ministry. You know, ministry is is the sharing of the Lord. It isn't a building. See, we don't go to church. We are the church. Your physical being, you are the church. That building is just a building. That's where you go to gather. No different. So we have a lot of stuff going on right now. We have the correlation of a lot of dates that are taking place. Every single day something is happening. There's an event that's moving us closer and closer and closer and closer to the full release of Nasara, to the acknowledgement that the IRS has been abolished, See, if you just stop for one moment, clear your mind, and say, what would I expect to see in God's world on earth? It's not the IRS. It's not the SEC. It's not the Federal Reserve. It's a basic structure of government for the people, for the people, for the people. And it's about bringing the awareness of who we are through love. 
and having plenty, if not more, than we could ever imagine we needed to fulfill that task with him right there as our co-CEO, co-founder. I don't know about you, but it just makes me want to shout. And we're getting the privilege to do it. We're the called upon generation with the generations to come that are part of this. I mean, there isn't anything more important right now. When you think about it, in this whole dog and pony show, which the Lord had me put out there from the very beginning and everybody, you know, no, nobody wanted to believe it. It's all just a, just a movie. You know, Gary Gensler is going to be up for a Grammy or an Emmy or whatever it is they get. You know, best supporting actor that never had to admit to anything or say anything. And there's a whole host of other parties that are involved. And some people may not like that. They might not like to know that in their mind they got duped. You know, Joseph Lubin, Fauci, Clayton, Hinman. All of these people are just players in this movie. I, mean, I told you my dad was in law enforcement. If you know anything about undercover operations, you have to get to the people on the inside. And that's exactly what's happened. They're just doing their part so that evil can be rounded up and terminated. Because you think they're going to run out in front of the, the bus and say, here I am. No. It's taken time to draw them out. This has been a well-orchestrated plan. The Lord has used many, many people to do this. And what's the most important thing for a person that doesn't know the Lord? Their life. So they turn it over and they give up the evidence and they continue to be what I call a double agent on the inside, giving up the critical information. That's the story, folks. That's what everybody's going to come to see. You're, you're hearing me tell you more of it than I've ever told you before. I've posted breadcrumbs, bits and pieces. That's why they're, they're literally giddy right now. And why do you think they're still out in the public light? Why do you st still think they're showing up on CNN and uh, MSNBC and in all these other places and they're, they're doing conferences and because they still have to do their part. They have to play the role of the bad guy, of the evil guy. So it doesn't do any good to, to get frustrated at them I call them names and this, like, you know, this and that. No, they've already had their moment and been told you get two choices. Either you do this or we have to say goodbye to you. And that means you leave the earth. So it's, it's, it's getting comical. It really is. Because in a normal world, if that were you or me, right, we'd be sweating bullets. We'd be all over the news. There's nobody over at these guys' house with groups of people.
because it's all for show, people. This is all just part of a movie. Just part of a movie. Yeah, remember when remember when he had me pointing out the Truman show? It's just a movie. And XRP is identified all over that movie. Go find that post. And look at that post. I break it all out. And that wisdom came from the Lord. It wasn't mine. I don't have any inside information. Well, actually I do from the greatest insider in the world. God. The one who created everything. Who knows everything. Because he already watched it play out. Nothing's new. So we just have to be prepared. We just have to get ready. And let it all happen. And I, I, I really enjoy, I was watching a video the other night, and it was really funny because they said, you know, how can people be saying that, you know, XRP is going to go to zero, and then, and on the other hand, say XRP is going to go here? Well, it's really simple because when this system shuts down, everything in this world as we know it, from information, stock market exchanges, it's gone. It's chaff. It burns up in the fire. Like my SEC video. When the system comes back up, everything has a value of zero. And where does XRP go? Where does XLM go? They go to their given va the value that's going to be given, just like Jimmy Valley said. They've already determined the price for XRP. They've already determined the price for XLM. The great ripoff isn't going to happen because this information is out there. Because the Lord had me starting to post in, in April of 2021. That wasn't for me to become popular. That was so you would understand what the motivation was for the enemy. And you wouldn't fall into the trap and sell off all your XRP and then go chase something else and lose it all. And then when this all happened, you'd have zero outside of just your Nasara money. That's the purpose. So while one thing is dying and is ceasing, the next page is turned and we're in that new age, the time of the Lord, his time, and everything flourishes. And he fulfills every single promise he ever made. Everything is restored seven times. Since the time of creation of man. Over 7,885 years ago. All laid up in heaven multiplied times seven. Compounding. The Babylonians were the first to understand and utilize compounding interest. They couldn't do that without the zero. They learned that from Enoch. So God kind of used Enoch to speed up the process wanting to make sure that the enemy took just what God wanted to allow him to take, but that through compounding, 
daily compounding, it would its growth would be off the charts and available for us today. And there isn't going to be any compounding interest in the normal sense of the word going forward because it's not part of God's money system. God is moving us into a quantum power. And I got a big download on that this last weekend and what that's all about. And that's for another time. But literally the principle alone that we're receiving, we will never be able to spend it in an entire lifetime. It's, it's legacy money. Legacy money. It will go on for generations and generations and generations. And that's why it's so important that we come to fully understand our true identity because we'll have to train up our children so they can train up their children and children's children. Wow. I thought this was going to be just a couple of minutes here real quick on something. And, you know, this is the cool thing. I never know where the Lord wants to take this, where the Holy Spirit wants to go. So have a great week, and I love you and God bless you.